friends welcome back again today today we are doing mega cookies super mega cookies and cookie dough the wonderful thing with all of these cookie dough recipes is everything that's right everything i'm going to be showing you is freezer friendly so you can make up a batch of cookies bake them serve them to your family you can also freeze additional batches and they will be ready to go right when you need them so if you want to make these all ahead and freeze all the dough, you'll have a shelf in your freezer full of cookie dough, or at least a couple gallon bags full of cookie dough. And if you also wanna do the some for now, some for later method, you can make some freeze some. So we're gonna get cooking. I have my brand new easy and frugal make ahead and freeze cookies baking book. Today we are going to do the M&M cookies, the peanut butter cut blossoms. We're also gonna do the Oreo cookie balls, which are fantastic. And I think we're gonna go ahead and do the double chocolate chip cookies. And that's what I'm going to do today. Also coming up in this video for our mega cookie time, we're going to do the following cookies. All kinds of great helps and recipes here, all of our grocery list, etc., for the easy and frugal make ahead and freeze cookie book. So we're gonna do the M&M cookies first. Now with these, you can totally prep them. I'll show you, we'll get to that point. You can scoop them out on a baking sheet and just flash freeze them for about an hour or so. Then you have these M&M cookie dough balls ready to go. You can freeze them until you need them. Now you can set them out in the refrigerator and defrost them. You can also bake them from frozen, but they're gonna need a few extra minutes that you'll have to eyeball. It's also good, this is why I like to defrost these for a little bit first, to just press about two or three extra M&Ms into the top of them to put some M&Ms on the top. But here's what they look like before they get baked, and now we're gonna get going with our ingredients. Alrighty, so I've got as much as possible laid out here for these M&M cookies. First thing we're gonna do is in our mixing bowl, we're gonna whisk together flour, baking soda, and salt. We need three cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of salt. So let's get that in. I've got my, this is one and a half cups of flour. Get out flour, this is your destiny. Now I'll get another one and a half cups. Okay, so now we have our three cups of flour in here and our teaspoon each of baking soda and salt. I will have to set my camera down to hold my bowl with one hand. I'm sure you won't mind. So now we're gonna do two sticks of butter, which is one cup. That should be at room temperature. Then we're gonna do one cup of packed brown sugar and about three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Just regular old white sugar for the folks that, uh, who, who speak for Virginia. Um, put that all in a bowl and we're gonna mix that together next. And my butter wasn't at room temperature because I got it out of the refrigerator too late. So I just put it in the microwave for like 25 seconds, just to soften it enough in there i'm gonna get my sugars in here here we go and then i'm just gonna use my hand mixer to mix it up step one though is plug in the mixer general all of these cookie recipes I'm going to share with you in these mega cookies will make about three to four dozen just depending on the size of the scoop that you're using. So now I'm going to add my eggs in. <clears throat> And I know this bowl looks so small. Isn't this a precious bowl? Really, I should have put my flour and salt and baking soda in this bowl, but that's okay. It's all gonna come together in a moment. Okay, then we're gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla. flour 
mixture. Again, I'm gonna have to put everything back in this bowl in a minute, but I'm gonna get it mixing. Push the limits a little bit with my smaller one. Now what is precious is, for a very long time, well over 10 years, this was my largest mixing bowl. And if you've been around here a little bit, you know I got some bigger bowls in my life now. left to do for this fantastic freezable m m cookie cookie dough is that we are doing a cup of chocolate chips and then we're doing a cup of m m's now you'll need a handful of m m's i don't know if it ends up being like a fourth of a cup or so but you'll want those um, to press some extras into the top after we make the cookie dough balls get my cookie scoop okay so I've got two baking sheets I'm going to spread some parchment paper on each now this is the point where you can go ahead and get these M&M cookies in the freezer ready to go so I'm gonna put the this is the scoop that I have and I have a backup scoop now yet so I'm going to make these cookie dough balls life is so much easier with one of these handy dandy scoops and then again, if you're freezing, you will just put this tray in your freezer. So anyway, friends, what you are gonna do is you will scoop your cookies out, same, same pan, I'm gonna just go ahead and bake mine on. You will put them in the freezer. Once they are frozen, I mean, you can forget about them a little bit, but before the day is done, go back Take the frozen cookie dough balls, put them in a gallon like Ziploc bag, whatever kind of reusable bag, whatever you got just so it's freezer friendly. And then you can put the frozen cookie dough balls in the bag. Then whenever you need fresh homemade cookies, there you go, you're set. Can't get much better than that. There you go. First pan ready to go. I'm gonna get this in the oven because I have kids that are excited. And my, my oven is already preheated to 350. And you're just gonna bake the cookies for about eight to 10 minutes. Now, you know what I did? I did this whenever. Whenever I did my live cooking too, I forgot, but I think I can say that. I always forget to press, no, well, not always. Usually my first batch I put in, I forget to press M&Ms into the top. So let me just, let's hold our horses right here and get this done after the first batch, I remember. It's just nice to have as many M&Ms in your M&M cookies as you can. Flash freeze them, get them in the oven. Take two, I'm gonna get them in the oven. And now you'll probably be hollering at me through the screen, Jamarelle, don't forget those extra M&Ms.
Okay, so here is our second batch that's going in the oven now. Here is our first load of M&M cookies out. Next batch going in. Hard job, but somebody has to do it. This is my pregnant mama chair. Uh, to unwrap Reese, the little Reese mini peanut butter cups. And we're gonna make our peanut butter cup blossoms. So we need 36 of them. I just ate one of those warm M&M cookies. I also delivered two to Liam. You approve, right Liam? Mm -hmm. We got two more pans in the oven. So I guess I will have to get off my throne here in a minute and get those back out, but we can handle it. Since my uh, kitchen is heating up here, I'm actually gonna put these Reese cups in the refrigerator. You don't have to, but getting kind of warm in here. So I think I will. So let's see, 32, 36, perfect. So there we go, in the refrigerator. Gonna get out the last two pans of the M&M cookies and then get on to these peanut butter cup blossoms. Okay, you're gonna get a little headless Jamarill action here. I am doing two and a half cups of flour. These again are for the peanut butter cup blossoms. There's a cup and a half. Here is one cup. Then we need a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and then a teaspoon of salt.
have peanut butter cup blossom. If you want some of these mini muffin pans, I've got two of these. These will make, I think, about 38, and this recipe will make 36. Sorry, this, the pans will hold about 38. Um, yeah, so we got 36 ready to go. Um, got the flour, baking soda, and salt. Switch my bowl sizes this time mixed up in here. And so now in this one, we're gonna do our other ingredients. We're gonna do our brown sugar, our regular old sugar, and then our one cup of butter. Good enough, good enough. Camera battery light flashing at me. Just hold on a minute. You make me get up. So as I near third trimester in any pregnancy ever, whether my first or my ninth, <laughs> and you can at least see in my past YouTube videos during different pregnancies that third trimester I talk about sitting. I always like sitting. It is one of my favorite hobbies. I don't always get to do it that often, but sitting is my favorite. So I'm going to use the cookie scoop again. We're going to put the cookie dough balls in here. Then put them in the oven. About 375 for 8 to 10 minutes. 
Now what's, um, what's a little different is if you were going to freeze these at this point, you would have your sheet with your parchment paper. Even if you don't have an available baking sheet, I mean, it could be, I don't know, some cut cardboard, whatever you can figure out, a lid to a Rubbermaid container, parchment paper on it, freeze them. Anyway, so you'll take your cookie dough scoop, make your peanut butter cookie dough balls, then you will flash freeze them, and whenever you need your peanut butter cup blossom cookies, you will take them out, put them in the little wells here, and we will bake them and they're gonna bake in like a cup shape. Now once they're done baking, then you press one of those little Reese cups in there and it all works out fantastic. My mom, mom math brain, this will actually end up, we're gonna end up with 48. So that's fantastic. Cause remember I said most recipes are gonna be three to four dozen depending on the size scoop that you use. So this is fantastic. I will open a few more Reese cups. Those are already gone already. Okay, so now I'm just gonna open up some more of these Reese cups. I think I need, let's see, 14 more, I believe. Actually, 12 more. Sorry, I get slightly delayed, especially this time of day. But worst case scenario, if I would have opened up two extra mini Reese cups, I would have found a home for them.
Okay, so here's our first batch of the peanut butter cup blossoms. Now I dropped one poor little Reese's on the floor that did not get to fulfill its purpose in life while it's going in the chicken bowl. So there we go. Now while these peanut butter cup blossoms cool off, we're going to get started on the Oreo cookie balls. And you can see baking these in the little mini muffin pan, they just bake up in like, look, perfect little cup. Okay, now we are going to do our Oreo cookie balls. Well, these are fantastic, they're no bake. We need a pack of Oreos, we need an eight ounce block of cream cheese, then we need some semi-sweet chocolate. We're gonna melt the chocolate, gonna get that melting now. Gonna put the Oreos in the food processor and then we will throw in little chunks of cream cheese. After that, we just need to scoop the crushed up Oreos and cream cheese mixture with my little scoop in balls on a baking sheet, then we will dip them in the chocolate. Then we are gonna cover them with sprinkles. It's all gonna be fantastic. my one eight ounce pack of cream cheese and I'm just cutting it up getting it here into the food processor Uh, so just for for all my friends who say Jay Morrell, you have so much energy. Well, this is uh, pregnant cooking with Jay Morrell. I made eight dozen cookies I laid down on the couch for what was supposed to be ten minutes it turned into an hour 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we're finally back to working on these cookies. Now we're gonna be dipping these obviously here in a few minutes, but and then with these you can roll them, help roll them into a ball. Okay, so truth be told here, I heated up my chocolate and melted it. Then I took my little uh, 10 minute rest, turned into an hour nap on the couch. Then I heated up my chocolate again. Chocolate's a little too hot, so I'm just using this spoon to help me. I'm dipping these Oreo chocolate balls, trying to get off excess chocolate and then covering them in chocolate sprinkles. You could also, Amelia was like, we should use different colored sprinkles. But I don't wanna burn my fingers right now. All we're gonna do is put this whole pan in the refrigerator for about an hour or so. And then I'll show you how those turn out. So if you were gonna freeze these Oreo ball cookies, what you would do, what would be best, if you freeze them once they're dipped in chocolate with the sprinkles on them, the chocolate is most likely going to crack. 
So what it's good to do, get them in ball form, basically freeze them without the chocolate and the sprinkles. Just freeze them like this. Then later you can take them um, and you can even dip them frozen into the chocolate. They're just gonna set really quick. They might not need to even go into the refrigerator for an hour after. Um, so yeah, freeze them, dip them in chocolate, cover them in sprinkles. There you go. And I like the assembly line method of doing things more. So once I get this second row done, we'll go back down with sprinkles for both of those. Second row without sprinkles, the first two have it. to these last three rows. Just gonna go ahead and add some more sprinkles. No one's gonna say, Mom, too many sprinkles on these Oreo cookie balls. All right, so last but not the least, we are gonna do these double chocolate chip cookies. We need a cup of butter softened, already got that. We're doing a cup and a half of sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, two cups of flour, two thirds of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, fourth of a teaspoon of salt, and two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So let's go, and they will be delicious. So right here in this bowl, I've got the um, cocoa powder. And then we're gonna put in the flour, the baking soda, and the salt, and whisk these together. Then in the other bowl, we're gonna put in the butter. That was one cup of butter. Add that onto my dish pile. Cup and a half of sugar. Then we will whisk this together for a minute. Then we will add in the eggs and the vanilla. Oh, and my mixer's plugged in. We're just ready to go. I'm just gonna put the eggs in and then we'll do vanilla. Then we'll do some more mixing. I have this bag of flour, I had it in my freezer because you know, freeze your flour, kill any extra critters in there. Those happen. Um, it was in my freezer and I filled my two big flour things behind me 
and then what was left in there might be 10 pounds or so. That's what I've been using for baking today. up with one wrist what what's wrong with me huh it's best to add your flour gradually but I'm joking here Then we need to add in two cups of chocolate chips. Let's see if I have that hanging out here. at this point if you wanted to do freezer cookie dough scoop it out put it on your baking sheets with parchment paper put it in your freezer freeze it for about an hour then put it in your gallon ziploc or your storage bag of your choice and you'll have cookies ready to go from the freezer whenever you need them always a good thing to have and again my kids are not minding that mama's making up all these cookies to show you today They've been sampling all afternoon. And I will show you here soon, soonly, um, how the Oreo cookie balls also harden up. So also, wasn't sure, wasn't sure my video plan when this video would come out, but I think this will be my next video on YouTube, and I haven't posted anything for like a week and a half and two weeks. Benjamin might be singing Everything is Awesome in the background, though. But anyway, so nothing's wrong. Nothing major happened. Um, well, there's a slight thing wrong. I took five days off for Thanksgiving like a normal human being, and my videos usually run a week or so behind. That's just how things work for me between editing and getting things back and watching it and making other tweaks and you know it all just takes time. So anywho, took five days off. Then last week I was totally going to start filming and just get back to work in general. Well my main computer, my it's a MacBook I got maybe two years ago. Macs, so if you want to talk computers I can usually get four to five years out of a, a good MacBook Pro. Two years old and it was giving me all kinds of issues so I had to take it to our little local MacBook repair place. We thought it would be a quick fix. Turns out nothing's a quick fix, right? So they've had to order parts from Apple and I will hopefully be getting it, that was last week, hopefully be getting it later this week. So I got my inexpensive Chromebook from Walmart and got that going, got logged into it, and I've been getting caught up on back-end computer work stuff that I gotta do that y'all wouldn't see, right? But still has to be done. So that's how I accidentally on purpose haven't posted for a week and a half. I wanted videos to start posting last week. So nothing's wrong. Several people have written me and asked if I've had the baby or if I'm sick or anything in particular. I had a break, had computer tech issues, here we are. So I'm filming this video December 7th. So quick turnaround time to get back in the swing of things. I'm sure you won't mind. And then from here on out, we'll be back to our regular three or so videos a week that you all have been telling me you enjoy. 
and we'll just be rolling from there. So, yay. Alrighty, so these cookies here are going to go in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes. And then we will have double, double chocolate, chocolate chip cookies, okay? Yay. And you can, of course, use nonstick spray on your baking pans. I'm just using parchment paper because I have it. It's also good if you're going to do the freeze, freeze your cookie dough for later method, which I have... Now I have 10 people here right now. So 12 to 14 dozen cookies already gone. So that's why I'm not freezing these at this moment. Okay, so Oreo cookie ball. They've been, they've really only been in the refrigerator I think about 30 minutes or so, but they're perfect. Here's our first batch of the double chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Yum. More are in the oven. I've put other cookies we've been making. It's totally we've made about 13 dozen. Uh, kids and family have enjoyed several cookies this afternoon. But I have them in this airtight container, which is where I'll be adding these once they cool. And then I will just put a lid on these. We will probably wait to get in these until tomorrow or so just because uh, everybody's pretty cookied out now, but I will just cover these and they will be perfect tomorrow. You see how nice these have turned out? You probably won't believe me, but this is a salad I was working on to go with dinner. Just got chicken in the oven. Uh, you know, when I make a video doing 13 dozen cookies, that was my final count. We're, we're a little cookied out now, but it's okay. My family will eat them cookies. Anyway, the, here's some more of the chocolate chocolate chip ones that also came out of the oven before I put our chicken in for dinner. Don't forget you can click the first link in the description below to get my new easy and frugal cookie baking book that is now available over in my shop. And you can use the special coupon code HELLO20 to take 20% off your first purchase over in the Large Family Table shop. Thank you for making 13 dozen mega cookies with me today and I will see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye. <music>